In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. We call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments of your sacred law upon love of you and love of neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. God. Today's responsorial psalm is, to the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. To the world belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in this holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth, all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the crowd was pressing in and Jesus was listening to the word of God, he was standing there in the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. Fishermen had disembarked and were washing the nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. He sat down, he taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep, lower your nets for a catch. Simon said to me, play master. We worked hard all night, we caught nothing. But at your command, I'll lower the nets. When they lowered the nets, they caught a great number of fish. The nets were at the point of tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat, to come and help them. They came and filled both boats. The boats were in danger of sinking. 
Simon Peter saw this. He fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Astonishment at the catch of fish they made seize him and all those with him. Likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. When they brought their boats ashore, they left everything and followed him. Gospel of the Lord. Well, every once in a while, the planets align and you get the perfect storm. And this would be a good example. It was 38 years ago today that yours truly and my classmates were ordained by a prior bishop to the priesthood at St. Peter's Cathedral at 10 o'clock in the morning. If there had been a gospel that we should have picked for that mass, it would be this one. Because while a priest doesn't have necessarily a job description, What's your, what is the job description? Go catch men. That's your job. Get, pe get people to hop into the boat and follow Jesus Christ. And if we had an ordination tomorrow, that would be the same job description. But things have changed in those 38 years. For one thing, there's an awful lot less of us. We, I bet you we haven't ordained seven men in maybe the last 15 years together that we ordained that morning. I think maybe, I mean, I could be off in that. But there's a lot less fish. There's a lot less, especially for those of us who work here in the city of Scranton. You know, when I was a kid, there was 150,000 people in the city of Scranton. Now there's about 70. Think about that. We've lost half the population in my lifetime. Think, think about that. Not only have we lost the population of priests, we lost the population of people to try to reach and bring to church. And of those who do live in the city of Scranton, for those of us who live in the city of Scranton, maybe less than half speak English as their first language. A friend of mine said, how can, I, how can I minister to the people when I don't speak their language? Very hard to do, it is. And that number, not only are there less people, I, I hope you took the time to read it was on about page A7 in yesterday's Scranton Times about young people, uh, gen, millennials and Gen Xers. The one thing they don't want is children. There will be very few children coming up in 20. Many of us will be long dead in time, but fears of the planet go, baking itself to death and, and the corruption in, in, in politics are just one thing, don't have kids. They have no desire to have children. So there's going to be fewer priests, fewer people. I mean, it's just... The gospel changes. We don't hear the gospel as it is. We hear the gospel as we are. The good news is, what has really changed since those 38 years when I got ordained, and before then, was that it's not a job description for me. It's a job description for all of us. To find people who don't know who Jesus is, or for whatever reason used to come and don't now, especially with the COVID, because of your baptism, not just my ordination, all of us have the responsibility of finding the people who need to know Jesus, who need to get reattached if they once were, or who never were, and there's a lot of them out there, a big percentage out there, who just never had any religion at all, never had time for it, never introduced to it. One of our greeters was working at the door on Sunday and a lady came in and said, you know, first time here, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a church. Oh, there's a lot of that. People shopping. I hate to use that term, but it fits. Where's a church where people are made to feel welcome? Where they get a quality product on Sunday morning? That they feel fed. It's up to us to say, try to come with me. Come this Sunday. Come this morning. There's still plenty of boats, and there's still a lot of fish. We just have to connect with them. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll offer our petitions to the Lord. Today's response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That religious leaders will help to nurture a vision of the church where the poorest are offered seats of honor in our communities. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in civil authority will dedicate themselves to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and the generous defense of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Bob Reed, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be at peace with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you give us life that we may evangelize, that we may preach, we may reach, and we may teach others to follow you. Give us the courage and wisdom to find people to bring to Jesus, your son, today. We make all of our prayers through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive this with favor, Lord, we pray, these offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Our Lord's death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. So with the angels and saints, we praise you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when separate into a chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ever evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the Eucharist, that we may come to possess your redemption in mystery and way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. 
Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.